Hello, this is Chris from Optinet. This time, we're going to look at how the clinical records in Flex work. Make sure you check out my separate video on the contact lens records as well. So firstly, we're going to log into Flex and click onto new site exam record. All previous site tests are shown under the site test tab with a quick date of when the last episode was here as well. So new and site exam record. This of course is the clinical setup. What the non-optometrists, non-clinicians would see does vary slightly and I'll talk to you about that as we progress. So it's got today's date and time and it's got my name up in lights as the optometrist. If you're, it's a different optometrist it's putting on for, we can obviously choose their name there. And under the type, we can choose the type of examination here. So site exam is our default. Supplementaries in my list, we might also see diabetic screening or pressure check, different types of exams that you may do. And in the setup, we can ring fence those from the dispensing analysis. So for example, if they're just coming in for a pressure and fields check, you're never going to be hoping to get a dispense off the back of that. So medical assessment is first and it's copied through all my answers from my previous information. What we can do is just go through and choose the details here as we require. Medications, we can double click or drag and drop those across onto my record as well. It'll show the date that those have been added. Uh, if you do need to remove one, it'll log that as well. Right click and remove and you've got the full audit trail there. Uh, if you want to add a new medication onto the list, then you've got a space down here where it will add it on for this patient and it'll be on the dictionary for next time as well. Where you're going to spend the majority of your time is within the clinical assessment. So again, it's popped up asking me what I want to do. I've got a standard eye exam in here and this is what Flex ships with, our default information. As you'll know, if I've been out doing clinical training with you in practices or here at our academy, I always tell people, don't pay too much heed to the actual content within here. It's about the formatics of how the clinical records work. They are, of course, fully customizable because every optometrist works very differently. People are often surprised how different they may work compared to their peers. So within here, the tabs down the left hand side show the main inherent parts of the eye examination. And then we have procedures and results. Think of these as questions and answers. But what I can do also with this copy feature, because a lot of the benefits in honesty with Flex you may not get until a patient comes back for a repeat episode, is I can choose to copy information from a previous examination. So what that's done is it's filled out some examples here for me. The intention of this is that it was for things that would seldom change. For example, my family ocular history. However, a lot of people do like it to just copy in everything that they've had on a prior exam. But to put answers on, what we can do is we can double click or drag and drop the answers through into here. We can, of course, write our own answers in too. If you just double click into the answer area, then we can put the details in. A couple of other useful features. I'll try and point out some tips and tricks as I go today. Uh, you'll see here problems with star star vision. Wherever you see two asterisks, if I double click on that, it's a replacement text function. So if I now type in near, then it's going to say problems with near vision. Over two columns at the moment, procedure and result. If I click down to eye info, it's now going over three because it's split per eye. And what we can do, we can double click for the answer to go onto both eyes or drag and drop onto the eye that we wish. Or again, if you want to put your own answers in, the answer box is now split in two. And what I can do is copy it from one eye to another as I need to. So this continues through the external eye, internal eye, and more tests. People sometimes miss that one because it's a tab out by itself. But all of these are fully customizable and you can check out my video on the customizations for more details about that. Clinical refraction is next up. This is the first bit of familiarity for non-clinicians here. What they would see would be just a tab called prescription, which is going to be the given RX. But you can have up to six different tabs in here. I've got four turned on my example. The last test has been pulled through automatically. We may want a wearing to come through. So what they've walked in with or what you've facilitated today, uh, that could appear as wearing, for example. I've got objective, subjective. You might want ret, cyclo. And then given is what's being taken forward for the dispensing optician. So it's remembered what I've had last time, which is uh, which is useful. So you can quickly compare, and there's what I call the headlines here, the sphere, sill, axes, and the ad. But just to show you how I'd enter the numbers, again, this is a little bit keyboard-based compared to most of Flex being very mouse-based, is I can just go through and tap the numbers in which I require. I'm putting on negative sill, as um, I would say probably the majority of optoms are in my experience. You can set it so that number is automatically given a negative, i.e. the minus sign in the setup. 
Uh, with the vision, if I just put 12 as my vision, it's going to put 6 over for me. And indeed, 5, 6 over 5. However, if you do put in a, a logmar, or for example, a 3 over, then it will respect that. So we can go through and put on all of the information I require just here. If I've got an ad, if I put an ad of 1, when I press enter, two things will happen. It's going to enter on the left and also fill out the nears. Here we go. And indeed, the intermediates would work in the same way too. There's a notes box, always useful for occasional scribble, perhaps if you've been using overlays, something like that, you can make a note of that as well. But what we can do then is we need to mark one of our prescriptions as the given. Don't worry, we don't have to fill it all out again. What I can do is choose copy, a couple of options in here to be able to pull through previous uh, RXs from previous episodes if you want to. I can copy objective down to subjective as it's the next one in the journey. But I'm actually going to choose objective to given. And what that's going to do, if you watch now, is it's going to light up the given tab and bring all my information through. Well, you might be thinking, oh, actually, this is in negative. I'm just a locum here. Everyone else works in positive. I need to transpose that. No bother. Just press transpose and it's all flicked around for you as well. Transpose up towards the top middle. Continuing across now to IOP and PD, a lot of people say that's a bit of a funny thing to have in the same tab. Yes, I agree. I think cynically it may come down to just where there was space on the record in the early days of Flex. PDs, in my experience, rarely taken at this point because obviously if a patient's a bit savvy to it, they can ask for a full copy of their record because they know that the PD's been taken when you've set up the test frame perhaps. So a lot of people don't enter that except maybe for under 16s. With pressures, your tonometers, so you've got your Goldman, iCare, Perkins, you can make a note of those in the setup in Flex. I've just got tonometer on my default as Flex ships. But what we can do is put in up to uh, four different readings. I appreciate your tonometer may give you an average, which is why it's, uh, it's done that for me there. Uh, but you can put it up to four, and it's a time-sensitive reading as well. Optometrists amongst you will be thinking, that's high. Uh, yes, it is. Those are my um, pressures. I've got borderline OHT. I'll tell you about that another time. Uh, but it's quite useful for someone who does report a pressure like this uh, that you can actually view the IOP history. So you can actually look in here and to see, well, is this something that needs investigating or is this just uh, normal for Chris, which is the, uh, is the latter for me. Uh, but you can also make a note of any drops that have been used and their expiry date and dosage and corneal thicknesses. So obviously pachymetry uh, can be linked to ocular hypertension and we can make a note of that down here as well. Clinical notes, also available to non-clinicians, despite the word clinical at the start of it. Uh, what we can do here, notes relating to the site test. So it's a little bit uh, of a white elephant, that box, for some people. Uh, it's just anything that hasn't fitted anywhere else you can make a note of. Maybe if someone's come back in for a SUP, you're not going to do a full clinical assessment. You just want to make a note of that you've dug out a contact lens or an eyelash, whatever it might be. You could do that there. Patient advice will copy through uh, to a GOS2 form or their private prescription, perhaps, if you're wanting to tell them about dry eye, blepharitis, and you can put advice to them in here. And with all of these boxes, when you hover over them, uh, there's a right-click to insert paragraphs option that appears. If I do that, it's quite useful to be able to insert preset blocks of text. So to save you typing it out or copying and pasting, those can go straight in there. Dispensing advice, that will pull forward for the DO. One of my lines always is that cynically a clinician um, is going to recommend something to the patient. They're more likely to go with it because the patient is more likely to perhaps go with what a clinician advises. We can put that in the dispensing advice box here and referral advice can populate on GOS18 forms, your own private prescription, doctor referrals, etc. Moving on, clinical drawing. Some optoms love this, some, not, some think maybe it's a little bit more of a gimmick, but it's up to you whether or not you use this. Uh, clinical drawing, we've got pictures here. To save using the back of an envelope or a post-it note, I can just grab a picture, and I'm no artist, as you're about to find out. But what I can do is go through and I can make different annotations on here. Looks painful, but there we go. So we can make notes on here if we want to. Clinical billing, this is a really good feature. This is the ability for you to start off the receipt in the testing room. So many practices will use this to see what extra enhanced services optoms may have upsold. But also, it's if a patient is leaving after the test, either they're not having a dispense, they think they're NHS, but actually they're private, then the um, optical assistants can see there is actually some work to be charged for. I can just double click on any item, and that now will create a receipt for myself. 
which will then continue through the practice. So I've started it in the test room. Then my colleague, the DO, is going to have the spectacles in a few minutes. And then it will go to reception where they might have a sudden real solution to add on to finish off the receipt. But you can double click to add any items on for clinical billing here. Posted, that will be ticked after the record has been saved. And finally, we've got the NHS and recall screen. This is really important because we can't actually save this record until we've actually got a recall put on it. You will notice, though, it's been saving as I progress. So if you've had a power cut or a network failure, your information is saved pretty much on every click. If not every click, certainly as you've gone from tab to tab. On here, though, we've got all the early retest reasons and codes. They're always fairly popular. Uh, and also we can mark, is this RX uh, not issued, unchanged, or new? You will get a nudge if you forget to do that, by the way. And the recalls. You can check out my blog post separately about recalls on the um, customer service portal, optinetukcom slash support. Uh, but we can choose the recall that we want here. If I just double click on rent, I'm due back in 12 months. I can change that number of months or even the specific date if I want to. So you're probably going to say to the patient, right, I'm going to send you out to see Bob now uh, for your dispense, and he's going to speak to you about tick, tick, and tick. So it's like that handover, because this will appear along with the dispensing advice we may have added, and what that will do is also show the business management section so you can see what has been put on there as well. So if you've had a real run on aspherics, it's because so-and-so has been talking about it in the testing room. If I click on Save Now, that's going to save my episode. I've got a till balance flashing for the chair time, which has been added, and they're all now available to view under Site Test. People often ask, can I go back and amend these? Yes, you can. People may raise an eyebrow at that, thinking, well, I could, well how's that with clinical governance, etc.? If you do go back and change anything, it's all fully audited in the system audit trail in the management section. So every keystroke, essentially, you can see what has been changed. So that completes the site examination record in Flex. I recommend that you check out my videos on the contact lens records and also how to customise your clinical assessments too. Don't forget, you can always book some training time with me through the service portal at optinetukcom slash support. Or if you think an in-practice training day may be beneficial, then all my details are on there as well. Thanks a lot for your time and the best of luck using Clinical with Flex.